the Lord. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all my brothers and sisters around the world. My name is Dr. PJ, and today is the beginning of a new series. I want to welcome each and every one of you from all around the world that are tuning in to these biblical studies. And I want to thank the Lord for you. I want to thank you for participating, for viewing, for listening, and be led by the Holy Spirit to listen to these Bible studies. I want to thank the Lord also for Pastor Dayless Jr. for allowing me to teach on his platform. And again, I want to pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch each and every one. And those that are listening, those who are near, those who are far abroad, Father God, whatever they're going through, Father God, I know you are a healer, you can touch, Father God. Father God, in every area of their lives, protect your children, guide your children, manifest yourself, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Father God, as I humble myself, Father God, to teach your word as the mandate that you have placed upon my life, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. And I want to explain to you that I'm going to be teaching a series about the women of the Bible and the warriors. There are several women that was warriors in the Bible. Some of them was physical and spiritual warriors. There were mighty women of God. There was prophetess. They did create intercession for men of God. And I just want to expose all of what the word have to say about women. From the time of the beginning, the woman Eve, although she was deceived and she was the gate opener of the fall of the first Adam. Also, she is the mother of all the living. Because there's something with the law that's called forgiveness and restoration. Amen. So we're going to dive in into our series. And our series have a lot of controversies because of opinionated men and translators who translated the word of God according to their own means. They translated the word and put things in there. For the, to suit their own self, to gratify their own self because they are males and they excluded the women of the Bible. So in certain translations where you see parentheses, listen, parentheses, be careful of those parentheses that you see in the Bible because it's not in the manuscript and those things that follow after the parentheses or right before the parenthesis, meaning they are not original in the manuscript, but there was a translator who translated it according to his own will. Amen? So we want to dive in into these different so-called philosophers and people who go around making up the word of God and saying God said this and, and then they, they put it on, on a prophet of old or they put it on and this person or they put it on Jesus and they blame God for all these errors. It's just errors. So today we're going to clarify that in this first, with this first um, expose, we're going to be exposing the woman of the Bible, the mighty woman of God, the warriors, the prophetess, um, the teachers of the word, the elect lady, the lady who was a bishop. She had the higher, higher, higher ranking and over men and churches. So yes, I will suffer a woman not to preach. That was not Brother Timothy. That was slipped in there by the translator. And we're going to get deep into this word. And we're going to cover. Now, for those who don't know me, <laughs> for those because you get to know me, but you really don't know me. For those who know me throughout the years, I've always tried to, I'm a researcher. I like to go deep and find things. You know, I don't, when you tell me something, I just don't believe it. 
I got to go and verify it. I got to go and search and dive. Or I got to go with, like with a shovel and dig. Or I have to go down in the gutter and clean the gutter out. So I'm a researcher also and I'm an educator. Not only in biblical studies, in theology or philosophy, but also in the college and the, and, and the university and in the school system. I work in the school system many years. So today, as I humble myself, I pray that you will open up your heart to the truth. And the first topic and the first woman we're going to be teaching of is going to be the light. The light is going to focus, you know, camera, action, lights is going to focus on the woman of God, prophetess of God, Sephora. And you're going to see later on why I'm calling Sephora, the wife of Moses, a prophetess. Because she was, she is a prophetess. Amen? Because only a prophetess can do these things. Only the daughter of a priest, of a high priest can do these things. And can stand as a mediator. Now, we're going to start with a little, a little background. And we're going to go to the lineage. We're going to go to the lineage of Sephora. And we're going to turn our Bible. I'm reading from the King James Version. You can turn your Bible to whichever version. Or you can compare two or three versions to see if you can go a little deeper. So that's what I do. I compare and I search and I swim and I dive and I do the butterfly too. And then I go on and I take a shovel and a pickaxe and I start digging. Because I want to find the diamonds, the pearls, the rubies, the sapphires, the emeralds. I'm going to dig deep. And then I love to clean gutters. So I would just take my shovel and I start taking out all that Mary clay and all that dirt and all that stuff. You know, I love to dig and clean out gutters. So, you know, that's my profession. Verse 1 of chapter 25. Then again, Abram took a wife. The manuscript specifically say he took a wife. And her name was Keturah. Now Keturah lineage, they say, go back to, all the way back to the book of Chronicles. You know, we can dive in a little deep, but I'm not going to get into that. But we want you to know, like Keturah was at the end. Um, he break. She was an Adamite. She came from the lineage of the Adam. She was not a woman like was a Gentile. She was in a, a influx, half breed with fallen angel. So that's why he took her to wife. His first wife was Sarah. His second one was Keturah. Keturah was not a concubine. She wasn't any side chick. Now the side chick and the concubine was Hagar. But Hagar lineage was with fallen angels. So uh, she was tainted. You see? So she, the, 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 she was excluded. She was a bond woman. A servant, a slave or whatever they want to call it. Or a hired indentured servant. And she became a concubine and a sad chick. So now we're dealing with the second wife. After the death of Sarah. Verse 2. And she bare him. Zimran. And Jokshan. Jokshan and Midan. Listen. Midan. M-E-D-A-N. And then Midian. M-I-D-I-N. And it's pronounced Midian. Midian. Midan is actually pronounced Medan. His name was Medan. And his other brother's name was Midian. And Ishbak and Shua. So you have that she had Zimran, Joshkan, San, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Six sons. God bless him with six more sons. 
he added on to Abraham because he said, I will make you as what? The number of the what? The stars, the sand, you know, he's going to enlarge his coast. And in verse 3, Jokshan begat Sheba. And remember, in those days, you could name a girl Sheba, or you can name a man Sheba. You could name a girl Aquila, or Aquila, or a man Aquila. Those names, even in Africa and certain countries, sometimes they have the same name, like Alice. Alice is, was originally a name for the males, but girls, the, the mother started giving the girls the name Alice and so on. Rudy was a name for, for, for male, but they started giving it to the girls. So we got to be careful with those names if you don't understand the manuscript. Verse 3, Joshan begat Sheba and Dedan, and the sons of Dedan was Ashurim and Letushim and Lumim. And the sons of Midian, listen, listen on the prophet of Desha, Midian was Ephah and Hefer and Anok and Abida and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. Because remember, in Bible, in biblical meaning, your grandchildren are also your children. And that's from the Hebrew, and that was the culture of the day. Now they want to separate everything and say grandchildren, but those are also your own children too. Verse 5. And Abram gave all that he had to Isaac. You see, he gave the majority to Isaac because Isaac was the son of promise. But these six sons also, these six sons also were sons of promise. And you will see as I narrate the true history, because there's a lot of controversy, Keturah was his second wife. And number six, but unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. What Abraham did, Abraham divided some land and gave it to his sons, to his other sons. See? Verse 7, and these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, and hundred three score and fifteen years. Now, you know, Abraham was a very, very wealthy and rich man because God has blessed him not only with wisdom and knowledge to attain businesses and multiply, he was able to duplicate everything that he touched. And he had the blessings of the Lord upon him. So Abraham wasn't going to just give his six sons that he had with his second wife little gifts and send them away empty handed to live in poverty. Because that's his seed. That's his seed. Verse 8, verse 9. And his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah. In the field of Hephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. And originally, all of his sons attended to his burial. And even Ishmael that was living in Egypt came to his father's funeral. The field which, verse 10, and the field which Abraham purchased of his sons, of the sons of Heth, there Abraham, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife, his first wife. He was buried with his first wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt by the well, Laharohi. Now these are the generation of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Agar the Egyptian 
Sarah's handmaid bear unto him. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael and their names. Because the sons of Ishmael became dukes. And these are the names of the son of Ishmael by their names. According to the generation of the firstborn of Ishmael. Najabat and Kedar and Abdiel and Misam. And Misma and Duma and Masa. Hadar and Tama, Jetur, Napish and Kedema. These are the sons of Israel and their name to their towns and their castles and, the, and 12 princesses according to their nations. And those are the nations that you see today in the Middle East. From Saudi Arabia to Jordan. Those are the dukes. Those are the princes. The prince, they are princes. They are the bloodline of Ishmael. They are Ishmaelites. Amen. And we con we're going to continue to study about Sephora. And I just want you to, so you could see that Sephora is not in the Arab lineage. She came from the lineage of Abram and a second wife, Keturah. She was a direct descendant of the tribe of Midian. That's M-I-D-I-N. That the, the, the sons of Midian. She came from that lineage of that son that was born to the second wife, which is Keturah. And Abram. So she had that lineage in her blood. Amen. Now. The pronunciation is similar. But the spelling is different. See. When you say Midian. They believe. Like they are the Medes. So we're going to dive into a little bit of information. So we can clarify. That. The woman called Sephora and Jethro, her father, it is not from the lineage of Medo Persian, which is the Medes. You have the Medes, which is M E D E S, which is called Medians. Which is N E D E A N S. But the, most of the people and the translators, they are mixing up the two names and they are calling the descendants of Keturah and Jethro, Jeth, which, is, which is Jethro, is the lineage of Median. Which is actually a uh, Levitical lineage. Because anyone who is a high priest comes from the Levitical lineage. So Abram lineage come all the way down through Isaac. But also the second set of brothers that he had. They also inherit all the studies and all that tradition of the Hebrews because they also are Hebrews. Amen. Amen. For example, we want you to turn to the book of Numbers chapter 25 and we're going to be reading Let us start from verse 13. And in verse 13, I'm reading from King James version, Numbers 25 Verse 13, I'm going to show you the lineage. And you're going to see how they misspell the word. There's two names. You have Midian, which is the son of Abram and Keturah, which is M-I-D-I-A-N. And you have the Midianites, which is M-E-D-E-A-N-I-T-S. So you got two different tribes that sound similar but they're not similar 
the Midianites, the Midianites, this N E D E A N I T S, those are the Medo Persian people. Those are what you call the Aryan race, the Aryan people. And I'm only saying this for educational pur purpose only. As we dive in, I'm going to prove to you that there are two different separate lineage. The Medo Persian people are mixed with fallen angels. The Midianites, that, what, that from the descendant of Abraham and Keturah, a son, Midian, they are not the influx, or they did not inherit the bloodline genes of any fallen angels. Keturah was not tainted. That's why he took her and married her. They actually was married. She was not a concubine. She was not a side chick. She was not a girlfriend. She was his wife. Amen. And her son was a priest. His name was Midian, which is, we call Midian. M-I-D-I-A-N. Now, the Medo Persians, those are the enemies of the Israelites. That's, those are Medo, the Medes. M E D E S. The Medes and the Persians, those are the enemies of the Israelites, the Hebrew people. So, what the translators did, they missed, they, they, they did not write out the, the name properly. Instead of put Put in M E D E A N I T S. They put everything M I D I A N I T S. So it looked like Sephora came from the Median Medo Persian, but she was not a Medo Persian woman because the Medo Persian people was Aryans. They were not black skinned people. Amen. Let us clarify that, and that's in history. You can you can all, always Google the original Aryan nation, which is Med, Medes, the Medes. Amen. Let's go to Numbers 25, verse 12. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. Verse 13. To clarify the lineage as the Sephora. And he shall have it. And his seed after him, even the covenant of everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. 14. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Medianitish woman. And remember, Medianitish woman is not Median, the son of Abraham and Keturah. It is the Medo Persian woman was Simbri and the son of Salu, a prince of the chief among the Simeonite. They came from Simeon, that tribe of Simeon, right? Which is a descendant, right? From one of the 12 tribes, right? The follow. He came into the camp with a Medo Persian woman. She was a Mede. Mede, M-E-D-E-A-N-I-T-S. But the translators misspell it and put M-I-D-I-A-N-I-T-I-S. But the Midianite, she was a Medo Persian. He brought her in the camp, which is all the enemies of God and the enemies of of the Adamic Abrahamic people. These people are influx with fallen angels. Verse 15. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zur. He was the head over the people and of the chief of the house of Midian. That's N E D E A N. But the translators put in their M-I-D-I-N. 
which is the son of Abraham and Keturah. So we're making that correction from the tablet so you can follow. Verse 16, we're still in Numbers 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is what, remember, Moses is married to Sephora, the prophetess, which is a descendant of the house of Midian. Midian. 17. But this verse in Numbers 25, the 25th chapter of verse 17 is not the descendants of Abraham, Keturah, Midian. He is talking about the Midianites, the Middle Persian people. So God say, the Lord said unto Moses, vex the Midianites, vex the Middle Persians and smite them. Smite them Middle Persians. 18. For they vex you with their wiles. You know, their very, their very lifestyle. The iniquity, the immorality, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor, because the God was Bel Peor. See who they worship? The, the Middles, the Middles, let's call them the Middles. They put Midianites, but the people think they're talking about Abraham's son with Keturah. No. It's talking about the Medo Persian people, the Medos, the Aryan nation. They call themselves Aryan back then and they call themselves Aryan right now. This is for educational purposes. In the matter of Pehod and in the matter of Cosby, you see, the daughter of the prince of Median, not Median, Median, M E D E A. And their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague of Peor's sake. You see, this young man, Simri, he disobeyed and broke you from the tribe of Simeon. He broke the rules. He brought, he brought one of those strange women in the camp. So God said, smite them. And we're going to continue. We want to show you the difference between the bloodline of Sephora and the bloodline of the Medo Persians, the Aryan nations. And I just want to confirm a little bit of history so you can understand there are two Median people. One is Median and one of them is Mede. And we have to remember that King Darius was a Mede. And he was king over Medo Persian, two tribes, Medo Persians. Amen. And we can read about it in Daniel chapter 9. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9 and we're going to read probably one or two verses, one verse to clarify. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asuerus, the seed of the Medes, remember the Medes or the Midianite, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Amen. So we see this, the seed of the Medes, what they call the Medianites, is M-E-D-E-A-N-I-T-S. Amen? Mistranslation, misspelling the word, and putting it on a different tribe. Those people were called the Aryan people. You can always Google Medo-Persian Aryan people. And this is 538 BC. Also to correlate... So you can understand that the, the, the king Darius was also a Midianite. You will go to the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 1. And it will read, I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, also in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. Verse 2 to close out. And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. And the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up against the ram of Greece. Yeah.
which is Greece. And you can see Medo Persian, two tribes. And the Medes consider themselves an Aryan nation. Amen. And I just want to recap. I'm reading from the Smith's Bible Dictionary from 1884. And I'm going to read a little bit about Darius the Mede. He was a Mede and he was also from the Aryan nation. And he was the son of Asuerus who succeeded the Banimolian kingdom of the death of Belteshazzar. Being then 62 years old, in 538 BC, only one year of his reign is mentioned, but that was of great importance of the Jews. Daniel was advanced by the king to the highest dignity and in his reign was cast into the lion's den. This Darius is probably the same as Astyages, the last king of the Medes. Darius, the son of Hastistaspis, the founder of the Medo-Persian Medo -Persian Aryan dynasty. They become Aryan nations. Remember their influx. Upon the usurpation of Magian Smerdis, he conspires with six other Persian chiefs to overthrow the imposter and, and to succeed the plot that was placed upon the throne in 521 B.C., with regard, well, of the Hebrews, Darius Hysisperis pursued the same policy of Cyrus and restored to them the privilege which they had lost. Darius the Peri Persian may be identified with Darius the Second, king of Persia in 424 BC through 405 BC, but it's not improbable that it points to Darius the third, Condomatinus, the antagonistic and of Alexander and the king of Persia in 336 to 330 BC. Amen. So I'm just giving you a little bit of the background and the historical that is laid out and is mapped out that this was originally, they called themselves Medianites. But with an E and a D E and a A N I T S, amen. And they were considered themselves to be a higher race of people, a supremacy over the Hebrew, the Israelites, the Jews, and every other Gentile. They consider themselves superior. This go way back, and we still dealing with it to this day. Amen. So I believe I've clarified a lot about Sephora, the woman of God, Sephora, the prophetess of God, and Sephora, her name and the meaning of her name in Hebrew is a female bird. The name have a meaning. Every name has a meaning. Female bird. This woman was the daughter of a Levitical priest called Jethro. Jethro was the descendant of another priest called Midian, which is the descendant of the second wife Keturah with her husband Abraham. So they practiced all the Levitical priesthood and they practice the sacrifice and the feasts and the different things they practice together. Amen. And they follow the tradition of the father of faith, which is their father, their ancestry, which is Abraham. As we continue exposing the woman Sephora, the prophetess of God, we're going to turn to the Exodus chapter 2, Exodus the second book, and we're going to be reading from verses 15 to 25. I'm reading from the King James Version and we're going to go through and see how Sephora, the woman of God, the prophetess of God, met her husband Moses. 
And now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of what? The Medes. And he sat down by a well. When Moses fled Egypt, Moses basically went into Arabia, into, into the Arab Peninsula. And he was in the land of the Medo Persian people. He went into the land of the Aryan nation, which is Medo Persian which is Median, which is M-E-D-E-A-N. Amen? And he sat down by a well. When he got there, he, he traveled. You know, God gave him the strength to run away before they kill him because he had killed the man and buried him in the sand because the man was a slave driver and he was beaten up and mistreating the Hebrew people. So he defended the man and we fought him and he knocked him out and killed him, you know, self-defense and he buried him in the sand and ran away. So now in verse 16, now the priests of Midian, now this is a different tribe. This is the descendant of Keturah and Abram, which is the priests of Midian. Midian was the son of Abram with his second wife Keturah. So the priests of Midian had seven daughters and they came to draw water and fill the thrones to water their father's flock. Amen? Verse 17. And the shepherds came and drove them away you know those nomad shepherds you even see them in, in when they go from one area to another they came and drove them away from the well but moses being the man of god that he is a strong back moses stood up and helped the girls he helped them and watered their flock amen 18 they always say blood blood call to blood if you from somebody leanish blood call to blood like me i was in a class and i was sitting there and i had my princess feather in my back of my hair i had my princess feather from the native american tribe in the back of my hair stuck in the back so there was a brother in the class but he did not, he kept looking at my feather and he kept looking at me and I look back and I see he glancing at me, not knowing that the brother also was a black Seminole from the Minkwa tribe. So we had a, 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 a connection here in the spirit. You see, he was, he looked at me and I looked at him and I went outside and he said, let me ask you something. I just saw that princess feather in your hand. And I said, yes, that's from my mother people. They are black Seminoles. Oh, and he said, oh, I'm a black Seminole too. Amen. So sometimes you can feel like you meet somebody, but you knew them a long time ago. But still, you got to be careful. It may be a setup. 16. Let's continue. 17. 18. We go in verse 18. And when they came to Rehuel, their father said, their father, he said, how is that ye are come so soon today? That's what Jethro asked his daughters. And they say, an Egyptian delivers us out of the hand of the shepherds. You know, they know my shepherds, the ones with the camel. And they drew water and, 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 and also drew water enough for us and water the flock. Moses was a strong man. And Moses was content to dwell with, and, and he said, verse 20, and he said unto his daughters, and where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man, calling that he may eat bread? And Moses was content to dwell with the man, 
and he gave Moses Sephora his daughter he gave her into marriage you know to Moses right this is the lineage of Abraham and Keturah verse 22 and Sephora the woman of God and she bare him a son and he called his name Gershom for he said I've been a stranger in a strange land hmm. I say every name got a meaning verse 23 and it came to pass in the process time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage they were suffering and they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham Isaac and Jacob and God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them amen so we want now to go I want to express myself and let you know that Sephora father Jethro and Sephora have a different religion from the people who dwell in that land and the name may sound similar to you but today the pronunciation that we saying is different from the pronunciation from back then there are two different races of people the median which is the race and the people of the Hebraic descendant of Abraham and Keturah they look different and the Medes and we say M-E-D-E's are the Aryan people, the Medo Persian people, they call themselves Aryan nation. And we're gonna go into, into history now. Let's go now into history. Oh, we're gonna close out and then we're gonna go a little bit in history. This is the end of part one of Sephora, the woman of God, the prophetess of God. And the wife of Moses, the lawgiver. Moses was loved by God and he gave us the tablets, the Ten Commandments, so we could be a, make a difference between good and evil. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this part one. Bless us, each and every one of us, Father God. Give us spiritual ears, give us spiritual eyes. Soften our hearts, Father God. These are your people. Let your word go out and never return unto you void. Amen. I thank you, Father, for your blessings and for all that you're doing in our lives. Continue to heal. Continue to bless. Continue to lift up your people in every area of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. And remember, I defeat 